What's going on, everyone? It's your boy Cody G with the Dig Deeper Network. Figure I'd do another blog. It's been a little while since I've done it. Wanted to take you uh, with me on my morning routine. And I got a story. It's, it's a good one. Stay tuned and to the car. The story that I'm about to tell you might freak some people out. Some might expect this. It involves somebody that I had uh, business dealings with and I've been quiet about for a couple years now. So I feel like I wanted to get this off my chest. I felt like this was relevant in the YouTube realm. My girlfriend told me to let sleeping dogs lie about this one. Um, so I'll consider that, but still going to tell you the story. Anyway, I have the privilege to live near a source for energy drinks. So I'm going to head over there real quick, come back here, and I'll tell you the story live right here. <sighs> Yo! Let me show you how long this drive is. I assume there's some other way other than this occupying my hand. Where is the genius to create a solution to my problem? Shut up and take my money. Yeah, man, I gotta tell you something that's been pissing me off for years. Y'all, it's not possible to carry something on your shoulders, something on your chest for years like I have without saying a goddamn thing. So guess what? I'm saying a goddamn thing. And I'm going to call this person out publicly, and I hope that this helps spur on some sort of resolution to my problem here. First, before the ether happens, I'm gonna have to make some rock star action happen. Tis the occasion. I'll also be smoking a cigarette. <clears throat> Turn the shit off. Quit beeping. First of all, y'all, this is the grossest habit you could have. I have been smoking for probably three or four years now, and I'd really like to kick the habit. Um, that's why I'm trying out the vape stuff like that. So yeah, I'm not trying to make this look cool. I'm just doing this because I uh, this is a touchy topic for me. Once upon a time when I didn't live here in the lovely state of Delaware, I lived in Colorado for a couple of years. And during the time I was doing music and promoting and stuff like that, so I was drawn to this character by the name of Shoe Nice. He had shy of 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. I knew that he was there in Denver and so I kept begging him, uh, dude I know you're in town let me buy you a drink. Uh, let me smoke you up. You know, whatever it takes. I, I'd like to meet you. And it was great because that worked. I met somewhat of a celebrity. Uh, shoe nice. He's been on Tosh.0, he's been on True TV. I mean he's on the list of celebrities, he's maybe a D minus celebrity, okay? So I met Shoe Nice. He lived in a hotel in Denver on the outskirts of Denver, or like in the industrial area. And so I guess with AdSense, enough was coming through so that he could pay for a hotel and really not much over that. I met him. He was a guy that kind of needed a little support. We bonded. We became uh, pretty decent friends. He wanted me to be his agent and help represent him get him out local comedy clubs we did some shows together some public stunts I filmed him a couple times Shu and I probably met once or twice a week at, at one point back in the day the thing about Shu Nice is he's very entertaining he's very much like like a knockoff of Chris Farley maybe this guy can pump out jokes it's it's weird it's it's like the same jokes he can make anybody laugh mostly if if for not the shock value. All right, so him and I built some trust together. He was having some lapses in his PayPal. 
which today I, I'm not entirely sure. What, what he kept doing was doing stuff he wasn't allowed to do, like uh, trolling and stuff like that on other people's accounts. And YouTube would hit him with a strike, something along those lines. He wasn't getting paid his AdSense money. So at a certain point in our relationship, you know, him working together, him helping me promote the people that I was promoting and things of that nature was, Shoe Nice was uh, my pocket ace. I mean, he really did help me big time. Uh, before I dive into the problem that I have with him, I will say uh, one of the major significant things that he did for me was help a DJ of mine get into a big EDM festival, uh, Snowball, via a Wavo contest. And what he did is he made a <clears throat> he made fan signs for everybody who went and voted and ate them, um, and it was really cool. We had like maybe 800 entries or so. Uh, won the festival hands down. Like I said, there was a point in time where he ran into um, a point where he couldn't afford his hotel anymore. Well, he had a couple days before PayPal was coming in. You know, so every once in a while I would have to front him uh, his hotel fare. I went down to the lobby and paid for his, uh, you know, his stay. You know, I, I paid for maybe a week's worth in total of uh, hotel rooms uh, at this cheap hotel he was living at. Once the tab got up to about a thousand dollars, and mind you, I wasn't making a lot of money at the time. I was half working my own business, half like working at a gas station at the time, very committed to my business and, you know, not really having a lot of avenues of revenue at the time. I was just mostly bending over and helping everybody that I could back then. I, I've since learned from that. We got to a thousand. He dedicated to paying this back to me. Time went on, time went on. All of a sudden he moves, disconnects, and he, you know, then he'd hit me up at a random, you know, Bro, I'm going to Tosh.0, or bro, we're, we're going to be famous, I got you back, plus interest, you know, we're bros for life, stuff like that. Dude, there was this one time he wrote me up this, like, really sad note. Upon his death, he would give me, he gave me his credit card or something like that, and, you know, wrote a note with, with permission that uh, I could, you know, I, I could have access to these funds. I gave that back to him. I wasn't feeling that vibe. My, my credit card... Uh, I, I couldn't keep keep up with it anymore. I eventually had to default on my own debt that was created by Shoe Nice, and he eventually started saying stuff like, "Yeah, but you're hooked up. You're you're bros. You're you, you guys make big money. You know, it's it's not a big deal. Whatever." Mind you, I was like 20, 21 at the time, and he's he's in his 40s. I mean, he he's my dad's age, and. One major thing about Shoe Nice was being with him, he kind of needed to be babysat. This guy's alcohol problem is uh, more than anybody could know. Um, this is the most extreme alcoholic I've ever met in my entire life. Thousand dollar debt that he had to me, I was somewhat okay with it because I had artists I needed to promote. Not, I knew if I asked him a favor, now he had to pay it to me because he's not paying the money he hasn't given me a date for it there's nothing realistic i've asked him time and time again to to make a payment to make some sort of contribution towards it he insists that he's waiting until he gets famous and then he will pay me plus interest this debt at this point where july 2016 dates back to now summer of probably 2000 13 there, there's a slight possibility that it's 2014 but this debt that I have with shoe nice is going on three years now that I haven't been paid a single dime on at this point he has limited his communication with me I'll just put it that way he puts up and shuts down his Facebook page all the time at a certain point he decided to start copying a friend of mine Joe with uh, crutch 420 uh, another big channel he's got like hundred thirty thousand subscribers now he saw that he took off in a matter of about six months and got nearly a hundred thousand subscribers decided to start something called uh, shoe nice 420 completely ripped him off 
You look at the content, it's absolute garbage. And so, you know, he, he, he put me on his related channels for a little while, and now I'm off, and now he's back to the same games. I, I want to show you a couple things that I researched on this. He likes to beg his, and, and they talked about this on Tosh.0, oh, by the way, he begs his fans for PayPal money at random just so the dude can pick up booze. That's literally all it is. The, the liquor slams, he, he says he's a martyr for doing it. He just likes doing it. He enjoys getting blackout drunk. Uh, the last video that he made, he, he just chugged a half gallon of McCormick's nasty piss vodka down the whole thing and blacked out for a whole day. So I'm going to put a, a couple little things here where these schemes of his uh, have been put out. But at this point, I have a YouTube channel. This debt still exists. I asked him to promote me. Dude, I'll knock out 500 bucks of your debt. You know, get me 100 subscribers. Put me on your channel. Do whatever. It's still three years later and I still get these empty promises that he never follows through on. Now, this is someone that I dedicated to. He gave me his word as a man, and he's not standing up to it. I've seen many stories of jilted fans like this that got ripped off. A lot of these people got paid back, and I didn't. So it's time for me to expose to the world. This guy's shoe nice is childish. He's stuck in the 80s. He's not a man of his word. He's not doing anything to get help. Uh, with his alcoholism. He is not changing his life at all. He is still very much paycheck to paycheck with his AdSense, despite the fact that he has over a half million subscribers. And people with a half million subscribers manage to find a way to make five to ten thousand dollars a month. He doesn't. This is because he started his YouTube page back in like 07, 08. He, he was on the early train. Like, all of us YouTubers wish that we were at this point. But he, he worked. You know, I, I take some of his tactics. He connects personally one by one with everybody that subscribes to his channel. Now I'm at the point where he doesn't really communicate with me anymore. He isn't promoting me. I want to just relinquish this debt. I am tired of thinking about it. I'm tired of knowing that this money is out there. I'm tired of knowing that I did a favor for a grown-ass man who does not stand up to his obligation. I'm tired of knowing that this person who I had invested so much faith in had done this to me, to a young person, uh, just straight up took advantage. Now there's nothing that I can say or do that's going to get me paid back at this point. So I'm coming on YouTube right now, I'm making this video to relinquish this debt. Alright? Chris Shuey, you no longer owe me a thousand dollars. I want you to sit in this shame. I want you to realize that you screwed me over and I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it roll off. Even though you're 25 years older than me, I'm going to accept the fact that I assisted someone in their, uh, in their horrible addiction and I should not have done that. I should have let you be on the streets. I, this is something you're geared for. This is something you like to do the little street stunts so that you can make a buck. Okay, that's that's what you're supposed to do. I should not have shown any humanity in me to try and save you from your situation. And you have taught me a very valuable lesson in life that nobody should fucking care for anybody else ever for any reason. It's all about yourself. You can only trust yourself. That's it. I could have built something uh, with you. I had plans and every time that I brought something to the table it, there, there was no there was no talking to you there there was you know it's all about how you want to do it that's that's just the way it is that's your way is the only way so unless you have something for me unless you would like to come out and help me promote my channel unless you would like to come out and Try to do something to help my life for the sacrifice that I made for you. By the way, that collection bill, I still have yet to pay it. So that money that you would give me goes into the debt that I, I would pay. It's not a thousand dollars of profit for me. It's a thousand dollars applied to paying the obligation that I took on for you three years ago. Now my credit is wrecked. 
and you think for some reason I have it nice and you don't, well that's the fucking pussy in you. That's the entitled, uh, everybody loves shoe nice, everybody... This is why your channel is full of nothing but dislikes at this point. Enough people know that you are an illegitimate YouTuber, you're a beggar, and you're somebody who's going to die early because it's your choice. I have forgiveness in me. And I have never forgiven uh, such a significant amount of money. I have never forgiven such a backstab in my life like this, but I'm going to. Because in 2016, it burns just as bad as the first indication that I got that my debt wasn't going to be paid. Whatever you want to do, however you want to work this out with me, you know how to reach me. At this point, I've made it clear. At this point, I've knocked on your door way too many times about this. At this point, I'm just going to air the laundry. Shoe Nice is a fraud. Shoe Nice takes advantage of younger people. His fan base is nothing but preteens who are underage and watch the fucking liquor slams. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. I've never met somebody like this, but it, it truly bothers me to the point that I just want to relinquish it and get him out of my life. Anyway, personal story. I actually have tons of stories I could tell about my experiences with Shoe Nice. And if you guys are interested, man, I, I'm willing to tell it. Because at, at this point, I, I don't want to be quiet anymore. I want to voice myself until I can expose him for what he is so I can inspire some sort of change in his life or I can make this debt go away. I can write this off on my books because now I'm having to scratch together this thousand out of my own money and take care of this. And I'm gonna do it. And guess what? I really hope that I do not get to that point when I'm in my 40s. That I will be wealthy. I will be ready to retire at his age. This dude is scratching by, you know, making a thousand, fifteen hundred a month, something pathetic like that, uh, getting drunk all the time, and, you know, living day by day. And you taught me to never be like you. And guys, if you're out there, please know there are people seeking to do this to you. There are people that are clever enough to jip you for your money. Let me be the person that learns that mistake for you before it happens, but I know that it has happened to a lot of people because this is not unique. We all have people in our lives that want to take advantage of you, that want to suck the lifeblood out of you so that they can personally gain. And for me, I live my life at this point where that doesn't exist anymore. I live my life based on my hard work and the fucking weight that I pull on my own back. Again, I forgive you. I just want you out of my life at this point. Thanks for tuning in to this vlog from the Dig Deeper Network. I know this was a little bit heated, but I felt like I had to share this. I uh, got some more content coming. I'll be shooting from the studio later on today. Uh, do me a favor, subscribe and like this. Uh, let me know if you know who Shoe Nice is down in the comment section below. Till next time.